Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to do a analysis of Lind. And uh, five-year chart, they're up 147%. They definitely outperformed the S&P 500. They're now trading at a 35 price-to-earnings ratio, which is very, very steep, especially for the type of business that this is. It's a $215 billion company, one of the largest companies in the world. Um, absolutely massive company. Let's take a well, actually, so this company they do gases and chemicals and they do refining and mixing. So they do a lot of um, like complicated stuff that's really difficult for me to understand. Like I know it's chemicals and like um, you, you like help companies with chemical solutions, but uh, but it's really like I couldn't find like where they're actually making most of their money from because they do a lot with um, like fuels uh, as well. But uh, we're going to do our best, even though I don't really have a great understanding of the business. Um, we're just going to be mostly taking a look at the numbers. And usually you can find a lot of good information just based on numbers. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, their total revenue has grown from $11 billion up to $32 billion in the past six years. Right here, between 2018 and 2019, they actually did an acquisition, and that's why the revenue jumped by almost double. Um, but overall, if they didn't have that acquisition in there, then their revenue growth would be basically like three or four percent. So actually, really, really low revenue growth, um, unless they're doing acquisitions. And their gross profit has actually been increasing quite substantially, uh, especially after this acquisition, and their costs have been pretty steady, but their revenue keeps rising. And so it's contributed straight to their gross profit. And as well with their operating expenses have not gone up. And so all this revenue increase is translating straight to the bottom line. And so their margins have really been increasing a lot. Um, can that continue? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think that the reason why their margins were so high last year is because the prices of a lot of different inputs actually went down like natural gas I, i'm pretty sure natural gas has got to be one of their largest inputs and so that's why uh their margins increase so much um but yeah pretty good net income but still probably doesn't justify their current valuation at uh, 35 times price to earnings ratio uh they've been buying back lots of stock as well not quite sure if that's the best use of capital especially when they have quite a bit of debt at 15 billion i mean it's it's not horrible to see this because they have a pretty capital intensive business and uh with refineries and, and all that stuff and uh they can pay it off in probably like three years so it's not horrible um in terms of their cash flow statement they buy back a lot of stock like i said they bought back four billion last year um which seems kind of high uh, but they've bought back more in the past and uh and yeah, I would expect that going forward as well. They also pay a dividend as well. Uh, they actually bought back more stock and paid more dividends than their free cash flow last year and the year before that. So they're actually taking on debt to do this, which probably isn't the best use of capital. Uh, taking a look at their stats, let's take a look at their margins really quick. Their ROIC is like between 6 and 12%, so not the greatest ROIC. Their, op or their gross margin has been increasing, like I said, and their operating margin has been increasing a lot, um, translating straight into net margin. Um, let's take a look at their short percentage. So I usually go to Yahoo Finance for this, and their short percentage is only 1.3%, so green flag there. It's not bad at all. Let's take a look at the analysis page. So usually I take these numbers from the, from the analyst estimates on Yahoo Finance. And I take the average estimate and I plug that stuff into my DCF model. Um, so I found the earnings estimates and the revenue estimates, and I plug them straight into this DCF model. Let's take a look at that. All right. I plugged those numbers in with a discount rate of 10% because I want a 10% return on all of my stocks and an exit multiple of 20. I feel like that's fair for this business. Um, I'm not quite sure what the moat is on this business. It, they might have some patents or maybe just the scale of their business is the only moat that they really need. 
but it's not like networking effects or brand. Uh, so the moat can probably be attacked. Um, so that's why the X multiple is 20. Like right now they're trading at a 35. So <laughs> still 20 is low compared to what they're trading at now. And uh, for earnings growth, I feel like uh, this is pretty, pretty accurate with earnings growth. And uh, so using this earnings growth of 10%, 8%, 5%, we're looking at a fair share price of about $300 a share. And so they're way overpriced at this moment. And using the revenue margins model, uh, historically they've grown at like 5% as long as they're not doing an acquisition. And usually if you do an acquisition, you actually have to issue stock. So I'm assuming that they're not gonna do any more acquisitions and we're gonna get a revenue growth of 5% moving forward, which this is actually a high assumption based on historical performance. Their revenue growth has actually been like 4%, but their profit margins have been expanding. Last year, they did 18%. Um, next year, I'm going to say they do 20%. And it might be difficult for them to get higher profit margins than 20%. Um, maybe they could do it, but uh, if they stayed steady at 20% profit margin, then their fair share price is probably like $260 a share. And uh, with them trading at 446, they're they're way way overpriced right now. I am not touching this stock at all. This this stock is going straight in the dumpster bin right now. Um, maybe if the price came down like to like 300 dollars a share, then I would look at it again. But uh, right now, this stock is like insanely overpriced. Luckily, it's not like super popular among the retail crowd, so they're not going to get destroyed by this stock. But uh, but yeah, that is the analysis of Lind uh, Corporation. Um, if you bought them today, you'd probably be expecting like a 3% return. Yep, probably like a 3% return. And maybe they get this up to like a 24. Maybe like it's possible they make it to 24, but they're not going to get better than 24% on profit margins probably. And yeah, if you did that, then they're then you're probably expecting like a 4% return. Or five percent return. So, like, even with this highly optimistic scenario, you're still not going to get much of a return from this stock. So, yeah, that's why this stock is going in the super overpriced category. And uh, yeah, that's the conclusion. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, share with your friends, and uh, leave any comments in the comment section if you uh, want me to analyze the stock or if you have any criticisms of my model. So, yeah, see you in the next one.